In the middle of the ocean, a woman's body falls into the water, floating for a few seconds before her eyes open in panic. Suddenly Brandon wakes up and realizes it was a nightmare. He works as a bodyguard for the governor's daughter Ava and he's been dealing with internalized guilt since he failed to protect her mother. Brandon and Ava arrive at the airport, where Ava meets with her friends Jed and Kyle. They're going on a trip together, and the boys aren't happy that Brandon is coming too, but Ava explains her father wouldn't have let her come without security. Once they board the plane, Ava and the guys sit in the back for privacy, and Ava can't help noticing it's strange for a flight to have so few passengers. Shortly after they take off, the plane shakes a little bit, but it's considered normal. Moments later the plane starts shaking again, and the engine can be seen heating up. The pilot tells the passengers that they accidentally hit some birds and there isn't anything to worry about. However soon the plane starts shaking again, and an engine catches on fire. At that moment the pilot asks everyone to fasten their seat belts and as everyone starts to fear for their lives, a part of the engine breaks and flies off to hit the side of the plane, killing a passenger. The crack in the wall causes a pressure change and everything starts flying off or shaking inside the plane too, with all the bags falling off and hitting people on the head. Passengers who didn't fasten their seat belts are pushed off their seats and thrown across the plane even when they try to hold onto other people's hands. In just a few seconds a wall blows off and creates a huge hole on the side of the plane, causing tons of people to fly away to their deaths. Brandon tries to hold onto a floating man, but the wind is too strong and the guy is blown away as well. Another guy tries to hold onto the seats, however the metal can't hold on for much longer and the few seats fall off with the guy still on them. A flight attendant tries to help a guy who is about to fall, only to end up falling with him. After losing most of its passengers, the plane starts falling at great speed and crashes into the ocean, where the water immediately starts flooding it. As Brandon is stabbed by a piece of metal, the seats are pushed forward by the impact and kill many passengers by crushing them. The plane sinks for a few minutes and eventually comes to a stop when it gets stuck on the seabed. Thanks to the plane being stuck in an angle, an airlock is formed at the back, so Ava and her friends plus flight attendant Danilo are alive. However Kyle has a broken bone in his arm. The group stares at the water, worried about the weird noises they are hearing. Suddenly Brandon comes out, bringing Rosa and her grandmother Marty to the safe area. Marty is unconscious, so Danilo starts doing chest compressions and after a few minutes of nothing, Marty wakes up. Then Rosa asks about her grandfather, and Brandon has to tell her and Marty that he sadly didn't make it. The group starts to panic, so Brandon immediately takes over leadership to calm everyone down. The airlock means they're safe for now, so they need to stay calm and wait for rescuers to find them. Ava checks her phone, but there's no reception under the sea. She points out there's a hole in the plane and that they should swim out, but Brandon explains their chances to survive like that are low so they must stay and wait. Danilo informs them that the pilots must have called for help before the crash, so help should be here soon. Afterward Brandon explains they should have backup oxygen just in case. Danilo says the plane has two tanks in the back for emergencies, but when he checks on them he finds them empty. At that moment Marty remembers that one of the passengers had a medical oxygen tank, so Brandon volunteers to jump in to find it. Before he leaves, Marty asks him if to bring her husband's hat. Brandon dives in and swims through the corridor as he checks the passengers who died in their seats. He finds the husband's hat and takes it, not noticing something swimming by the window. Then he finds the oxygen tank and takes it as well before checking on the hole. He decides to swim further to search for anything else he can take into his shock, he's suddenly attacked by a shark that enters through the hole. The creature immediately bites Brandon and he struggles or indicating something is going on. Suddenly the ripples disappear and Brandon resurfaces, telling the others to stay back while revealing some severe wounds on his body. Breathing heavily, he hands the others the oxygen tank and the hat before apologizing to Ava. Then he's dragged back into the water and the group sees the shark's tail peek out while the creature eats the poor man. Terrified, the group moves back to hide in the employee's area and agrees they should keep on waiting as Brandon says. Then Marty offers to take care of Kyle's arm, explaining she used to be a nurse during wartime and that's how she met her husband. Kyle screams in pain when Marty pushes the bone back into place, and using some thick magazines and bandages, she improvises a splint. Outside, a helicopter is flying near the area in search of the fallen plane. They have priority orders because they know the governor's daughter is among the victims, but for now they don't see anything. Back to the survivors, they hear some creaking and the plane moves for a few seconds, indicating it may fall again at any moment. Jed is starting to get too negative, and Danilo opens the oxygen tank Brandon retrieved. At that moment they see the water getting red and the noises make them realize the sharks have come inside to eat the drowned bodies. Suddenly the plane shakes a little and they see the sharks swimming by their window, hitting random plane parts as they move. Rosa is getting too scared and Ava tells her not to worry because she's sure they'll be rescued. However the helicopter still hasn't found anything and doesn't have much fuel left. The group keeps track of the water level and calculates they still have around 3 or 4 hours before the water reaches the back. However they also keep hearing the metal creaking and notice some water leaking through the ceiling, so they can't be sure if the plane will hold up that long. Suddenly the plane starts falling, sliding down for several minutes and causing a bunch of rocks to fall off until it gets stuck again. 
Thankfully the group holds on and nobody gets hurt, but this new angle is causing the water level inside the plane to rise faster. Since the seabed obviously isn't as solid as they thought, the group agrees they have no choice but to swim out of the plane. They'll need to find some way to distract the sharks, and Rosa says she learned at school that sharks don't like bubbles. There's still the problem of being able to hold their breath for that long, and Kyle suddenly remembers something. Some passengers were traveling with scuba equipment. Danilo explains those things are in the baggage hold and there's a hatch that would give them access, however the oxygen tanks are probably empty otherwise they wouldn't have been allowed in the plane. Ava thinks the rest of the scuba equipment could still be useful, but Jed is too pessimistic so Ava pretends she needs to pee and hides in the bathroom, where she has a breakdown as she hears the plane creak. When she comes out, Ava teaches Rosa it's okay to be frightened. Outside, the helicopter only has 15 minutes of fuel left. At that moment they finally find plane parts floating around, so two divers jump into the water to start the search. It doesn't take them long to find the plane, and as soon as they come closer the group starts making gestures at the window. One of the divers swims toward the hole while the other approaches the window to tell the survivors it's all fine now. Suddenly the shark appears behind him and he doesn't notice it, so the group tries to warn him. The diver turns around and finds nothing, but when he looks at the plane again, he's pulled down by the shark and killed. After hearing lots of noises above the plane, the group looks out the window and sees the diver's leg floating away. Remembering the other diver, the survivors check out the corridor, but nobody shows up so they assume the guy is also dead. Outside, the helicopter has almost run out of fuel, so they have no choice underwater and notices a shadow, but she can't know for sure. Jed tries to get a closer look by standing on the seats, only to slip and fall into the water. The group worries because they can't see him, but he then surfaces laughing because he had been pranking them. However he doesn't come out in time and the shark soon finds him, catching with his toothy mouth. As Jed struggles against the shark's attack, the group comes closer to grab his arms and pull, managing to get Jed away from the shark and into safety. Unfortunately they discover that Jed is missing a leg, so Marty makes Rosa stand behind the curtain while she takes care of the wound. Using some seatbelts, Marty makes a tourniquet to stop the bleeding, and Jed cries when he realizes he won't be able to participate in any more triathlons. Still determined to get out of there, Ava volunteers to go search for the scuba equipment. Danilo opens the hatch and they discover the baggage hold is also flooded, but Ava dives in anyway. With a flare, she looks around the area, unaware that something else is swimming behind the bags. Eventually she finds the scuba equipment, only to suddenly be startled by an octopus at the same time the flare goes out. The others begin getting worried when they see no more light, but, thankfully soon Ava returns with the equipment. The group opens the bags to find diving suits and masks, but there are only four. At that moment they hear something hitting the plane and rush to check the window, but no diver is around so it must have been a shark. By the time they turn around again, Jed is already dead. A desperate Ava tries to do chest compressions, but Marty pulls her back, making her see the truth. Suddenly the plane slides down again, but this time it stops quickly because the cockpit breaks and acts as an anchor. Water is rising faster, so they need to get out fast. Remembering Rose's fun fact, they plan to use the small oxygen canisters from the emergency masks to blow bubbles at the sharks. There's still the matter of swimming such a distance and Kyle breaks down, confessing a childhood accident that left him traumatized and made him a bad swimmer. However with Ava and Rose's supporting words, he agrees to try. Then Ava gathers all the oxygen masks she can find without going too deep into the water. The sharks are still hitting the plane, and the ceiling is starting to crack. The group starts changing and Marty volunteers to be the one without a suit because at her age, she would only slow everyone down anyway. After saying a final goodbye to Jed, the survivors get in the water, noticing the plane is slowly starting to slide down again. Suddenly the cockpit finishes breaking and falls into the abyss, meaning the plane will fall soon as well. Marty asks Ava to go first and take Rosa with her. The girls start swimming through the corridor only to find it blocked by a shark, so they immediately open an oxygen canister to scare it away. Once the way is cleared, they keep on moving, and soon Kyle plane and knows she won't be able to make it, so she stays back and waits to be reunited with her husband. At that moment Kyle panics and swims back to put his head out in the small pocket of air left. Danilo tries going back for him, but suddenly a shark comes out of the baggage hold and attacks Kyle, eating him in seconds. A terrified Danilo swims to meet with Rosa and Ava, who find the dead diver and take his tank so they can fill up their lungs. Then Ava sends Rosa and Danilo through the hole with the tank, but when she's about to leave too, a shark blocks her way. Ava swims back and freezes, so the shark swims inside without noticing her. However her tail smacks off her mask. Then Ava discovers more sharks are coming through the hole, so she starts swimming toward the front. At that moment the plane starts falling faster and the water pressure keeps her from moving. But luckily Ava holds onto the seats and pushes through, managing to leave through the front hole right before the plane falls into the abyss. Now Ava can start swimming to the surface, however she soon runs out of air and passes out. Her body obviously stops swimming, but thankfully the floaties push her up and as soon as she reaches the surface, she breathes and immediately wakes up. Ava panics when she doesn't see the others, but at that moment the helicopters show up and finally pull her out of the water. 
Danilo and Rosa have already been rescued, and when Rosa asks about a grandmother, Ava gives her the bad news. As a last goodbye to her grandparents, Rosa throws her beloved plushie into the water before falling asleep in Ava's arms. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.